So, you know, the zone diet really works so beautifully and there are many ways to get there. So in the previous video, I shared with you how you can just use your hand to pretty much get exactly what you need to get yourself into the zone and then adjust based on the how you feel after you eat a meal. So it can be just as easy as that. But if you're somebody who really thrives on structure and you really want to know exactly how much of each thing is going to work for you, or if you're an athlete and really want to have something specific, or if you really want to make sure that you're going to be able to lose weight, reduce that inflammation, get rid of the hormonal fluff. And it's really a good idea to try to be a little more specific measuring and weighing at least until you get a really good sense of what a zoned plate looks like. So I'm going to share with you today how to do that and provide some resources for you to make it as easy as possible. So as I go through this in the beginning, just know I'm going to be using some numbers, a bit of math. I'm not good at that, <laughs> but um, I think it's important just to give you a sense of what we're doing. And then I'm going to share with you an exchange program, kind of like the old Weight Watchers, where just use one column of this and one column and one column and you've got it made. So I'm going to get a little more specific and then give you an easy way to do it. All right, so let's get started with this. First of all, with that zone, we're going to be doing it working in what we call a block system. Why is that? Well, because here's what your block looks like. First of all, there is a calculator. I'm going to leave a link for that that you can go on to. It's called zonediet.com. And this is where I'm getting the majority of my resources for you. So it's a great place. There's a ton of information on there for you to really dig deep if that's something you choose to do. So for most of us, when you go into the zone block calculator, you'll be putting in your own weight and age um, and your waist measurements, a few other things. And then you'll be given the total number of blocks that you would need to eat in a day. Now, I will tell you that just about all of us women are going to have 11 blocks. Men typically have um, a little bit more than that. So or there'll be about 12 or 13 blocks. So we're going to, I'm going to base this on an 11 block system. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you think about one block, your, what one block of carbohydrate looks like, one block of protein, and one block of fat. So if you combine one block of each of those, then you're going to have one block. <laughs> that, makes, that doesn't sound quite crazy, does it? <laughs> so that's a block. So in the day, you're going to have 11 of each of those blocks together. Typically, a meal is three of those blocks in one meal. So three plus three plus three. So three blocks for breakfast, three blocks for lunch, three blocks for dinner. So that's going to give you nine blocks, which will then give you two more blocks to make your 11 blocks. So you'll have two blocks for snacks, whether you want to have one block maybe between breakfast and lunch, and maybe one between lunch and dinner, that's your choice. Or you might just want to do one block, uh, one time of a snack that has two blocks. So you have two blocks to play with. All right. So that being said, let's look at what is a block exactly. All right, so in this little schematic, this is what a block's going to look like. So one block of carbohydrate is going to equal nine grams of carbohydrate, and it's the total amount of carbs minus fiber. So the one thing that we now know is to get the most amount of satiety, in other words, to keep yourself feeling satisfied and full for the longest amount of time, it's about getting the correct amount of protein and a lot of fiber. Protein and fiber together is what creates the most amount of satiety. So when we're looking at the nine grams of carbohydrates, it's total minus the amount of fiber. The grams on the blocks, the block system has already taken that into account. You'll see that in a minute. 
All right, so one block of carb is nine grams of carbohydrates. One block of protein is seven grams of protein. And you can kind of see what that looks like. So one ounce of a chicken breast skinless is going to be one block of protein, and it's gonna have about seven grams. You can see that you're gonna get more, 40% more carbohydrates each time than you will the protein, but it's all already calculated out for you. And then we always need just a little bit of some healthy fats to balance all that out. So one block of fat is about one and a half grams of fat. Now, I will tell you this, even though it's 30% fat, because fat has so it's much more calorie dense, you don't get a lot of fat. This is not a lot. So I would still say it's a fairly low fat diet. In my opinion, this is a moderate protein, low fat, high complex carbohydrate diet when you see the quantities. All right, that's what that looks like. So you're probably like, all right, so what do I do with that? Well, do not worry. I'm going to show you how we're going to use the block system to make this as easy as possible. Now, for some people, if you find, I'm just going to show you this just to give you a quick idea with a label. You know, I'm going to show you the block system. You're going to have your own block system. And it is a document that actually is not found anywhere else. It hasn't been around for a while. Dr. Sears changed up the way that the block system looks. For me, I like the original and I'm so glad I kept it so I can share it with you. I just found it to be easier to use. But you can also use any of your tracking apps. So if you have um, like Fit Day or My Fitness Pro or Lose It, you can always put that in that you want 40%, 30%, 30%, and it will help track it for you as well. Now, I want you to understand, you don't have to be this exact for it to work. And once you get a, a, a plan, let's say you have a meal and it just after four hours, you're still, you're just starting to get hungry, you're feeling good, you have good energy, good mental focus, then that's a meal that I would just say that just goes into your tool chest. You know that that's a good meal for you. And for most of us, you know, most of us don't have different meals every single time. We typically have just a few breakfasts or maybe just one. I know for me, I have one, but some of us have a few breakfasts that we like, we use all the time. Same thing for lunches and then maybe dinners, we end up with a little bit of variety. But for the most part, we tend to eat the same things. So you'll just find a couple of the ways that you like it and then you're good to go. All right, so this is just a nutrition label, giving you a little bit of an idea. If you're looking at a label, what you might look for to make sure that it's balanced, or if it isn't, what it has in there, and then you can use other foods to help balance it when you're using it. So typically a meal is going to be about four, no more than 400 calories. Yes, the calories matter. And one of the things to know about the zone diet is that for anti-aging, the one type of nutrition, I'm, I call it diet, I'm just gonna say that instead of always saying nutrition plan, diet that we know actually works for longevity is a calorie restricted diet. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but that's the truth. So what this diet, plan does is it gives you, it's still calorie restricted, but it gives you as much dense nutrition as possible, as much food as possible, so that you can still restrict your calories, but without being hungry and getting as much nutrition as possible in those fewer calories. So you want to think about that in that way. So this particular one has 350 calories. I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. It's just for illustration. So it's under the 400 calories. Excellent. We always go when we're designing a meal right to the protein. It's a really good idea to start with your protein source first and then go to the carbohydrates and the fats after that. So with this particular protein, it's at 25 grams, beautiful. Three 
blocks of a lean protein is going to be about 21 grams of protein because it's seven grams. So you would be looking at anywhere from 21 to 25 grams of protein. And you know that you're in a good protein zone for your female body. So this is about 25. Beautiful. How about carbohydrates? Well, the total carbs in this are 43, but there's eight grams of fiber. So you would take 43 minus the eight, and that's going to give you 35 grams. And so you're going to be right in that nice zone of the carbohydrates. And then in the fat, you want it to be about less than 12 grams. This is nine. So this would be a very well-balanced zone meal for somebody if you were using that. And that's just a little bit of a way for you to note. All right. Are you a little confused at this point? <laughs> I understand. So let me share with you the 